51, Oklahoma State grant T. Boone Pickens died on September 11th. Over his lifetime, Pickens donated over $650 million to his alma mater, some of which went to renovating this stadium, the one that bears his name. As the Cowboys play at home for the first time since Pickens passing, as they host 24th ranked Kansas State. Terrific Saturday night. Great to have you with us in Stillwater, along with former collegiate, as well as NFL linebacker Ray Bentley. I'm Mark Neely. Edward Ashoff down on the field will join us shortly. Oklahoma State came into this season, Ray. They've made 13 consecutive bowl trips, and, and a lot of that thanks to the generosity of T. Boone Pickens. He certainly has made an impact. That's the big picture. The small picture, smaller picture, is that they're 0-1 in conference play because they lost their conference opener at Texas last week. Yeah, and that means we're going to see some desperate Cowboys flying around this field here this evening, and they've got three guys who can fly. And I'll start with the quarterback, Spencer Sanders. Great runner with the football, throws it well. Coach Gunn called him a fighter, I believe. Running back, Chuba Hubbard, he leads the nation in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. They're going to try and cut him back. 69 carries in the last two games. He'll get his share. And then Tylen Wallace, they will throw downtown to him half a dozen times or more tonight, and odds are pretty good. Wallace will come up with it. But for Kansas State, this is their conference opener after an off week last week. The expectations for year one of head coach Chris Kleiman Ray, were not all that high. Their preseason poll in the Big 12, they were picked next to last, but the narrative all changed two weeks ago when they won on the road at Mississippi State. Yeah, and they outscored them 14-3 to in the fourth quarter on the road, as you mentioned, and that really showed Chris Kleiman what kind of team he has. We're about to show you what kind of quarterback he has. Skyler Thompson is the best guy you've never heard of. I'm telling you, he can run the football, makes great decisions in this conservative-type offense, but he needs to light him up like he did in the fourth quarter with his game-winning touchdown against Mississippi State. State, he can do that too. Last time Kansas State came here, Stillwater, two years ago, they won that game. It was their first win in Stillwater since 1999. Now the K-State fans will be disappointed to hear this news. Edward Ashoff down on the field, third member of our broadcast team. Disappointing injury news right off the top here for K-State, Ed. Yeah, guys, wide receiver Malik Knowles did not make the trip because of injury, which is a big loss for the Wildcats. Offensive coordinator Scott Hazleton likes to put him all over the field and said that he's a guy who can really stretch defenses. Now, keep an eye on guys like Joaquin Gill, Joshua Knoll uh, <coughs> to come in and replace him. But remember, he's also a dynamic kick returner, a guy who took one to the house 100 yards against Mississippi State, so a big loss at Kansas State. Absolutely. That, that's a gut punch right, right out of the gate for them. Uh, uh, special player, even though he's a redshirt freshman, we'll see how Chris Kleiman's team reacts to that. Yeah, but they've known all week, and so they've got other guys that they've gotten ready for this game. And watching the Wildcats play, they're, they got a next man up philosophy. They roll a lot of guys through, so they're going to miss Knowles for sure but they have other guys who can do those things as well. Kansas State won the toss and deferred, so K-State wearing the white will kick off. This is Ty Zinter, his fifth kickoff of the season. The three of the first four have gone for touchbacks, and this one will as well. So it'll come out to the 25. For the Oklahoma State offense and red shirt freshman Spencer Sanders, number three. He's a special player, though a young one ran. Yeah, he's fun to watch. He is extremely fast when he runs the football. He ran it, what, 18 times last week. He carried the ball. They don't want him carrying it that many times. And he got, he's got a great arm, very accurate on the deep ball. He's a red shirt freshman, still makes some young guy type mistakes, but he's exciting to watch. So it's 18 carries, went for 109 yards last week. Play fake, he throws, looks for Ty Wallace in a catch at the 45. He's all the way to midfield where he is brought down there. A 25-yard gain on the first play of the game. Yeah, a little uh, run pass option. Popped it right into that hole. The Timbal will see all night, but reading that very well at coming in is Wyatt Hubert for the sack and a loss of eight yards. And Hubert didn't play last week. He was injured, and to get him back, Scotty Hazleton, the defense coordinator, was telling us that's a big thing for our defense, and you saw why right there. And he said he needs a big game from Hubert and right out of the shoot on the second play of the game. He gets his nine and a half tackle for loss on the season. It's Oklahoma State behind the chains, a second and 18, rolling out. Sanders towards the sideline, turns upfield, and the defender got a little piece of him, Reggie Walker. He He's able to advance for about four yards. I'm surprised Walker got something on him. He must have taken a good angle because when Spencer Sanders turns the corner, 
He's a threat to go all the way to the house. And I love how he had his eyes on the field, still trying to make a play with his arm. So a third and 13 on this first position for Oklahoma State from their own 47. Well, that look of pressure coming. Sanders looked left, now looks right. Now he's flushed out, rolling towards the boundary. Now wants to run and steps out of bounds right at midfield or just into K-State territory at the 49. Picks up four, but it's going to be fourth down. Great coverage in the back end by the Wildcat defense. There was absolutely nowhere for Sanders to go with the football. And sometimes he'll try to stick it in to Tylen Wallace. Even if he's covered, he was too well covered that time. Tom Hunt comes on to punt for Oklahoma State. And how about K-State, Ray? That, that first play right out of the bucket for Oklahoma State was completion to Wallace, but they bounce back and force the punt. Mike Gundy told us he thought this Kansas State defense is one of the best in conference. Phillip Brooks back to receive his punt for K-State, calling for a fair catch and takes it at the six. A 44-yard punt with no turn. And the Kansas State offense for their first possession of the game will not have very good starting field position. But a very dynamic junior quarterback, Skyler Thompson. And he's got a couple of big tight ends that really are a linchpin to this offense. He'll try to get the ball to him. Talked about Skyler at the top. I am so impressed with his composure. Coach told us he's got the it factor. And he, when you watch him play a little bit, you'll see manifestation of that right away. He's just in complete control. Does a great job changing plays at the line to get them out of bad situations. Again, no Malik Knowles for Kansas State. He fixed the handoff to Gilbert from his own end zone, rolling out. Thompson now coming towards the sideline, gives a stiff arm. But he's going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the first possession. Jarek Bernard was the defensive back who came up and put the pressure on the quarterback. Good coverage in the back end by Oklahoma State. And you know, do you get the feeling this might be a defensive type ball game here early? Well, these teams last year played in Manhattan, and it was 6-3 at the half. We'll see what kind of half we get here. Unbalanced line here. Here's the pitch. James Gilbert spun around and spun down at the 10. He gains about three. Trey Sterling, number three, came up for the Cowboys to bring him down. Sterling, a safety who plays close to the line of scrimmage. I, I mean, I'm going to call him an honorary linebacker. Especially after that play he just made right there, closing fast and making a sure tackle. And a third and seven for K-State. If this is the type of night, a lot of third and longs for K-State, it's going to be a tough night for K-State. That's not where they want to be. Third and three is right in their wheelhouse. Third and seven, that, not so much. Shown Books, as well as Waikin Gill, the receivers. Thompson now feeling pressure, dumps it off, looking for the back out of the backfield, Gilbert, but incomplete, shy of the 15. On the coverage, Jarek Bernard, and a three and out on the first possession for the Wildcats. Good coverage all over the field again. We've seen both secondaries so far stand up and, and glove people. There was really nowhere to get it, and had uh, Gilbert even caught that football, he'd have been short of the yard of the game. So senior Devin Anktel, the punter, comes on and have to punt out of his own end zone. Dylan Stoner standing at midfield for Oklahoma State. Pretty good punt and a fair catch called for. Takes Stoner back to his own 43-yard line. And that's where Oklahoma State will have their second possession after a 47-yard punt by Anktel. Tyler Wallace had a 25-yard reception on the game's first play, one of the top receivers in the nation, Ed. Yeah, and one of the best matchups we'll see tonight is between him and K-State cornerback A.J. Parker. Now, Sean Gleason's new offense has kind of taken off that deep ball a lot with, with Tylen Wallace. A lot of screens, a lot of short stuff that he's taken advantage of. And so I asked Parker, how do you cover this guy? You did it last year. You gave up five catches for 90 yards. He said, I just play my game. It's not that hard. If I go out there and play my game that I know that I know how to play, It'll take care of itself. This is the matchup you want as a cornerback. So he's pretty, he's pretty fired up facing him again. Yeah, Parker, you, you mentioned the numbers. No touchdowns for Wallace last year in the game in Manhattan. 
Yeah, held him to 90 yards. Well, there he is. There's Wallace. He's going to have a first down, and he's down almost to the 30. It'll mark him down at the 32-yard line of K-State, a 22-yard pickup. Man, this ball comes out quick. Watch Spencer Sanders. He sees it. Boom. He fires a rocket right into the two on the chest of Wallace. Sanders going to take it himself. Cuts to the outside. There's a flag down. He went out of bounds at 25. Jordan McRae is going to get hit for a clip on that. Tried to stop himself, but he couldn't. Ended up blocking the defender coming up. I believe it was Walter Neal Personal Jr. Foul. Face mask number 15. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. Well, the official saw uh, something else. Yeah, I'll take all that back. Uh, <laughs> my eyes, uh, I guess I can't believe him anymore. So against Walter Neal, yeah, he'd been banged up. He's got the matchup against McCray. Who at 6'6 six, six can be a tough matchup with his height. And Neal just 5'9, so you expect a fade down in this area of the field. Hubbard. We'll come out at about the 11. Yeah. It's kind of shocking that, that that's the first carry for Hubbard all day, a kid who had 37 totes last week. A career high for him. He has set career highs. And cares the last two weeks. Where Sanders want to go running around and he's finally wrapped up by Elijah Sullivan. A late. A third down at eight. And can't get a first down without scoring. Hand off Hubbard. Trying to stretch it out. Spins around. And will get positive yardage out of that. He made Walter Neal Jr. miss in the backfield. But there were just too many Wildcats running to the football, which is what they do so well. Jordan Mitty eventually bringing him down. And another look at you. See, just shake the defender right there with a quick spin move. He's fun to watch. So Ben Amadoli comes on to attempt 25-yard field goal from just inside the left hash. Perfect on the year is Amendola. Six of six. And now make it seven for seven for the Veneer senior from Pennsylvania. 25-yard field goal. Oklahoma State has the game's first points with 6-12 to play in the first quarter. The Abedol 25-yard field goal has given Oklahoma State a 3 nothing lead. Just past midway point of quarter one. 15th season for Mike Gundy, who was the 2011 National Coach of the Year. They made 13 consecutive bowl appearances. They've won nine of those games. And the flow's looking good tonight, by the way. Yeah, I like, I'm like. i a mullet guy myself. I, I'd like to say it's more of a, a lifestyle than it is a haircut. And Mike lives it to the fullest. Folks, you don't hear a guy say, I'm a mullet guy myself much these days. But you just got that from Ray Bentley. Philip Brooks from the eight. Went at the 20 and dropped there. Got the fullback Barta in there. Carry for James Gilbert. He pounded straight ahead and took up about three yards. Also got the tight end moved into the backfield before the snap. We're going to see a lot of that power running game. I would expect K State tonight. That's what they do. They try to pound you. Coach Gundy told us he thought this was going to be a backyard ball type thing, a very physical ball game, and that's how Coach Kleiman coaches. Man, he is as physical as it gets, and, and it's paid off for him as you can see. Hasn't lost as a head coach since November 4th, 2017. In South Dakota State when he was the head coach at North Dakota State. Little carry. Gilbert gets his nose lost stuck in there and lost the football. And Oklahoma State has it. Rock Martin came up with it. Gilbert trying to get some extra yards. Got that ball just ripped out of his arms. There's the first turnover by the Kansas State offense this season. That is an amazing thing in and of itself. They had four turnovers, but none of them on offense. Here he is. He's just trying to fight for the extra yards. It gets caught in that scramble, and it looks like the nose tackle, Tui Halamaka, is the one who ripped it out. Indeed, it was Tui Halamaka. And the Martin recovery gives Oklahoma State the football at the 26-yard line of the Wildcats. And this is a sudden change for this Wildcat defense. This is where you've got to really bow up and hold the offense to at least just a field goal 
if you want to keep some momentum in this game. Got three receivers at the top of the screen, including Tylen Wallace. Put Stoner in motion, fake the jet sweep to him. Sanders throws on the move and right as the football got to the intended receiver, Landon Wolf. He was hit by A.J. Parker. Perfect timing by Parker to up in that. Parker was in his own coverage, so he was able to get his eyes back to the quarterback and see what was happening in front of him and then closed down and timed it perfectly. He's an Oklahoma native from Bartlesville High School. In motion, Wolf, handoff, some room, running left, and almost able to turn the corner. It was Hubbard, but Taquan Patton was able to get the angle just enough to get him to the sideline and out of bounds. Yeah, now, Hubbard's a Canadian, played his high school ball up in Canada. I believe in Canada he'd have scored with the wider field on that one. <laughs> Here's Sanders, throws on the move, finds Stoner, first catch of the game for Dylan Stoner. 19th of the year. What a special player he is. Yeah, Coach Gandhi said he, he sees him as an NFL guy, and he compared him to Secretary. He says he has the biggest heart, and he's talking physically here because he outruns everybody in their offseason program, winning the sprints at the end by 20 yards over guys much faster. He's just got great capacity to just get it done. First down post from the 15 of the Cats. Here's the pass deflected, but caught Wallace. Somehow he's quickly wrapped up by A.J. Parker, but it looked like that ball got deflected. Yeah, either that or Spencer Sanders got hit as he let it go. It was a duck for sure. But how about Tylen Wallace being able to reel that in? A wobbly ball with a with a, a defender, Parker, draped over his back, and he still makes a tough catch. It's a 12-yard gain, and it's first and goal Cowboys from the K-State three. They struggled in this area of the field last week against Texas. Let's see if they got it fixed. Sanders rolls out wide open in the end zone is the tight end, Logan Carter. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. First time Sanders has hooked up with a tight end for a touchdown yet this year. They have tried to pound the ball down in this area. They gave that look. Did a little play action pass and he caught him asleep in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown Cowboys. Logan Carter, a guy who's a former walk on this year, was put on scholarship. His third catch of the year, first touchdown. Kluwer holds for Amendola for the point after. And 10 0 Oklahoma State as the Cowboys do take advantage of the Kansas State turnover and the fumble by Jay Gilbert. Yeah, and that's huge. And take another look at this. Just a play action pass. The whole defense bought into it, closed up. Nobody on the tight end. Easy little throw for Sanders. And this Cowboy offense is getting it going. And when you've got to capitalize on those takeaways, and they did on this one. Eighth touchdown pass of the year from Spencer Sanders finding Logan Carter. Brooks takes it from the eight to the 25. Gets up near the 30. This is actually going to be about the best starting field position of the night. Starting at throwing 30, indeed their best starting field position of the game. Make the handoff to Trotter. He'll throw to him out of the backfield. Down the sideline and a nice gain of close to eight on first down for Kansas State. Trotter's one of the three backs that they'll use, and I really think he's as north and south as any running back I've seen. He likes to stick it straight up field, one quick cut, and he's got an accelerator, and he can make plays, as you just saw. That was his first catch of the season, and that eight-yard gain is the longest play of the game so far for the Wildcats. Thompson looks back left. He's going to take a deep shot looking for his tight end and a diving attempt incomplete. Nick Linners. Malcolm Rodriguez, the linebacker, had great coverage on Linners. It needed to be a perfect pass, and it almost was. In fact, that's a catchable ball right there. I'm going to say great throw for Skyler Thompson. A tough catch for Linners, and great defense also by Malcolm Rodriguez. K-State now 0 for 2 on deep shots tonight. And 
Courtney Messing and the offensive coordinator said he's going to take some early to try and loosen up his Cowboy defense. And that wasn't a bad time to try no. because it leaves him a third and one. Very manageable. Well, I say that, but Trotter met by Devin Harper. Did he get there? I don't think he did. I don't believe he did either. And that was great interior defense. The penetration really is what stopped this play as Trotter Kind of runs into his own guy's back. Boom, right there. You got to open your eyes. He ran right up the back of Adam Holtorf, the center. And you know what? That's about 600 pounds plus. He tried to push there. And then the great play coming up, making the tack and the finish by Devin Harper. Yeah, Mark Sanchez is now a colleague of ours at ESPN. So I won't say it was a rear end <laughs> tackle or fumble, but he hit the back of Holtorf. And that stymied his momentum, so they fall short on third and one and half the punt. And a great punt by Anktel. And a fair catch taken at the six. So Anktel's punt able to flip the field thanks to a 56-yard boot. Go to the SEC and win on the road against a ranked SEC team. Yeah, you're going to get some accolades. First time for the K-State team to do that, a win on the road at the SEC. And here's Chuba Hubbard showing his speed. He's to midfield all the way down to the K-State 40. To tell Goolsby, the one finally caught up to him, a 54-yard run for Chuba. Watch this hole open up. Boom, great block by the tight end. Stepping into the hole was Logan Carter, and that's all the space Hubbard needs. And you see the gas pedal he's got. He gets a little breather. Ellie Brown comes in as the running back now for the Pokes. The first down from the 40 at K-State. Brown wrapped up. Minimal gain there. But just as you were saying, right, here's K-State. They just flipped the field with that really nice punt from Ankle, and then Chuba makes it a moot point with a long run like that. Yeah, he found the funnel and shot up through there. And when he hits it, 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 he hits it so fast that the DBs and the linebackers can't react, and now their angle is chase rather than coming at him. Sanders wide open is Wallace on sideline a flag down. What a throw on the run. 30-yard, uh, 20-yard dime. Unbelievable, but I think it was a push off yeah. by Wallace. Wondering why he was that wide open. Yeah, that'll do it for you. Pass interference, number two. Offense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. So 25-yard field goal for Amendola started it. And a touchdown catch for the tight end Carter. And all the scoring in the first quarter belongs to the Cowboys. 10-0 Oklahoma State leads K-State at the end of one. Welcome back to Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. We start the second quarter from Stillwater. 10-0 Oklahoma State. Sanders, time to throw, and he lost one down the sideline for Wallace and somehow came up with it. Great pass, great catch. Jonathan Alexander hit him hard and out of bounds at the 25. Perfectly thrown football. Look at the separation at the end by Tywin Wallace and his body control to go up high point the football and then hang on after taking a big shot from Alexander. 33-yard gain, first down, Oklahoma State from the 25 of the Wildcats. Handoff, this is Chuba Hubbard. 24, Daquan Patton in number five with tackle. Can't take blitz. One of their inside linebackers, he ate up all the interference, and that allowed Patton to come up and make a decent stop for a one-yard game. Ray, we're still early in the second quarter. I kind of get the feeling for K-State, they really need to hold Oklahoma State to a field well, goal. They, they are not a comeback type football team. That's not their wheelhouse. They want to control the action, the clock, and all those things. And when you get behind, you can do that. Here's a reverse. It went from Wolf to Wallace, and he turns the corner, bounces off one tackler, and it'll be first and goal. Cowboys at the seven yard line. I like what Sean Gleason did here. The offensive coordinator says, you know what, we're in a territory where we can take a few chances. Let's go with that reverse, get Wallace the ball in space, and good things will happen. 17-yard gain, first and goal pokes. Sanders to the end zone, looking for Wolf and a little too far for the redshirt junior out of Tulsa. Let's look at this razzle-dazzle again. Here's Wallace just heading out for the reverse, just got the pitch. 
before the man carrying it was tackled. And then when he's in the open field, he's exciting. Very talented receiver who does a lot more than just catch the deep ball these days. Yeah, he's improved his route running and his run after the catch big time this year. Sanders running toward the edge. Takes a hit at the five. Daniel Green pushing him out. Took a nice little shot there at the end, but it looks like he gave more than he took. I like it when a quarterback has a little bit of an attitude like that. Redshirt freshman Spencer Sanders out of Ryan High School in Denton, Texas. We just saw a huddle, by the way, by from the Oklahoma State offensive. If you were curious what that was. Yeah, they don't see many of those around here. Hand off. This is Wallace out of backfield. Inside the five to the four. Oklahoma State get a little creative there offensively. Don't get a ton out of it, though. No, but uh, Wallace took an eight-yard loss and turned it into a two-yard gain, what he did. And it's fourth down from the four. And they are going to bring out the field goal unit, Amendola. Watch Wallace playing in tailback position now. I haven't seen him line up there. He avoids two tackles for loss, turns it up inside and get positive yards. That's pretty good uh, stuff for a two-yard game. Amendola hit from 25 yards in the first quarter. This for 21 off the right hash out of the hole to Jake McClure. And to me, that's a win for K-State right there, right? To hold them to a field goal. Uh, agreed. And now they have to get something going on offense, which they have yet to do. Only 32 total yards so far tonight for K-State. You see what they're averaging over 450. If your case ain't the silver lining here, Ray, is that you have not played well, especially offensively, and you're only down 13 enough. Right, they're still in this ball game, and I'm looking at time of possession here, and Kansas State is third in the country, averaging almost 37 minutes a game. Right now, Oklahoma State has out-possessed them in this game by about four minutes. That is the last thing I expected to see here. Oklahoma State has seven plays tonight offensively that have gone 10 or more yards. Case eight, none. You know, Walter Neal, Phillips Brooks back deep for the Cowboys to receive this kickoff. Jake McClure. Brooks will let that sail into the end zone for touchback. Win over the Cowboys. He had a, at that point, career high three touchdown passes. The mark that he equaled in the season finale last season against Iowa State. Look at throw on first down. Topsick gives ground and then he's just going to throw it away and live another down. There has been no one open for him to throw the ball to. I mean, it's orange and black all over these white jerseys in that secondary. He had all day to throw that and still nobody materialized. You mentioned right at the top of the telecast a redshirt freshman wide receiver Malik Knowles did not make the trip here due to injury. Has that been a factor so far? A huge think? factor because they haven't been able to really stretch the field. They haven't had any explosive plays. And Knowles is that guy. Well. There is lightning within eight miles of the stadium now, though we do not have rain here at this point. But it's close enough that per the NCAA rules that they have to stop play. For what, at least 30 minutes? For at least 30 minutes. And as long as there's not a lightning strike within that eight mile range within the next 30 minutes, we will start in just about a half an hour. But every time there's a strike within that eight mile range, and that resets the half hour clock that we have to wait. Uh, before we pause for this road delay, Ray, Oklahoma State leading 13 0. Is this something K State can benefit from? Oh, I think it's a huge break for Kansas State because it's almost like a reset. Now you get to go back in, you get to make the corrections and from the things that you haven't done right, you get the coaches back together and kind of almost regain plan this thing and based on what they've seen. I've seen games turn on a dime after these delays. We welcome you back to Stillwater, Oklahoma. We're about to resume after an hour and 15 minutes or so delay. And here's the first play since the resumption. And that is caught by Kansas State at the 35-yard line of Oklahoma State. 
Samuel Wheeler out of nowhere goes deep and it's a dime thrown by Skylar Thompson and all of a sudden the Wildcats look like they got something going here. First off in just a few moments our camera operators for ESPN will be allowed back to their positions due to the lightning delay. So our apologies for just a few more moments you'll see the wider shot from midfield but this is a first down for Kansas State from the 36 yard line of Oklahoma State. They send the tight end in motion Blaze Gammon. He comes back to the near side faking the handoff Skyler Thompson rolling out of right getting towards the edge and he'll step out of bounds and lose a couple yards. Oklahoma State leading 13 nothing 742 to play in the first half along with former Buffalo Bills and Central Michigan linebacker Ray Bentley on Mark Neely Edward Ashoff out on the field. We had anticipated perhaps this delay due to the lightning and the storm could possibly benefit K State and at least a couple plays in it looks that way. Yeah it's a, it's a new ball game. This thing is basically after an hour plus delay it starts over. Now the Wildcats start in a 13 zip hole but they, they, they're able to forget a lot of that stuff that happened and go on forward from here. Second down and 11 just over seven minutes to play in the first half. Here's a handoff Jordan Brown doesn't get much. They get a yard or so to the 36 stop by Malcolm Rodriguez. Our camera operators by the way are back again our company policy. This is a certain amount of time after last lightning strike before they can retake their positions which happened to be just a few minutes later than the NCAA rules but we're back and rolling with all our personnel we appreciate your patience and here's a third down and 10 for K-State. Two receivers to each side for Skylar Thompson. Thompson quick strike finds Brown. He's hit about three yards shy, shy of line of scrimmage of the line to gain that is and he'll be about two yards short after an eight yard pickup. Colby Harvell Peel to stop for the pokes. Great read by Thompson. He throws behind the blitz knowing there's a void there because guys just left. Gets it out to Brown and gets him in field goal range. So here's Blake Lynch to try to get Kansas State on the board. 46 yard attempt off the right hash. Out of the hold of Den Inktel. And two of three this season in field goal attempts. It has the distance and it is good. And Kansas State gets on the board with the 46 yard field goal from Blake Lynch. So maybe that delay, the lightning delay, has helped K State. It's a 10 point game. Let's catch up on what you may have missed due to the lightning delay. And really, th this game began, Ray. K-State's offense not able to do much against the Oklahoma State defense. Oh, the Cowboy defense was impressive. You look at all the hats to the ball, and then they started hitting them so hard, they're forced to turn over, got a, a touchdown off of that. And this defense really has been outstanding. And then this was a nice touchdown drive that they got. Sanders hits Stoner for a nice first down. They hit Wallace inside. The five and then a little play action touchdown pass to Logan Carter. That's the lone touchdown in this ballgame. Had you had a chance to talk to Coach Gundy during the break? Yeah, guys, short and sweet from Coach Gundy. I asked him, did you think that the delay might have stalled the momentum that you guys had? And he looked at me and said, man, I sure hope not, but you never can tell until you get out on the field. And so I asked him, all right, what adjustments does your team need to make? And he said, well, so far we're doing all right, but we got to run the ball better. We better run the ball better here before the half. Other than that, we're doing all right. And right on cue, guess who? All the way up near midfield, 19 yard run. And Hubbard is so fast to the hole. There was a blitzer coming off the top edge. A lot of times that guy is able to make the play, but Hubbard hit it so quickly that he ran past the man and found a nice little seam. Sanders gives it right back to Hubbard. Cuts back left. Found a little bit of a crease and is able to get positive yardage. Not only positive yardage, yardage but gained in and another first down. Great vision from Hubbard. I mean, that one was designed to go outside. He saw it all blocked up, put a foot in the ground, and made a quick cut and got the cut back on him. Got a nice block from Jelani Woods as well. 
First down pokes from the 42 yard line at K-State and looking to throw on first down. He hits Wallace, Taylor Wallace, reception to the 36, tackled by Parker in a gain of six. Yeah, you got to keep Wallace involved. Get, get him the ball on every drive. He can make a play for you. That up-tempo offense for Oklahoma State, right back to Chuba Hubbard. Finds a crease inside the 25. Makes another man miss before he's brought down near the 15-yard line by Goolsby and Parker. Another nice run for Hubbard, that one for 21. And he gets right through the funnel. You see that funnel right there? That's what you try to get on zone blocking, and if you have a back who can see it, you'll get big plays. And here's Hubbard, just as we thought, Ray, after the lightning delay, that we would see more of Chuba Hubbard, and that's been the case on this drive. And Hubbard just cracked the century mark, seven to 109 on the ball game. Deserves a little rest. Yeah, not a bad average of uh, almost 17 yards per carry. Yeah. And LD Brown will spell him. Makes the handoff to Brown. Sanders rolling out now. Finds some traffic, but finds the open man. Metcalf, the tight end. A late flag, though, back at the 10. Illegal line of downfield, I believe. We'll see if this is coming back. An eligible man downfield, number 50. Offense, five yard penalty from the previous slot. Second down. Well, that was the center, Rye Schneider, getting the start at center. We talked tonight about the, the shuffling on the offensive line for Oklahoma State. Well, they've done a great job up till now, I can tell you that. And uh, that was a, a bit of a surprise, maybe the biggest surprise in this game for him. But that was a, an RPO, if you will. And they were trying to get the ball to Tylen Walls. He was double covered. And Now we are officially at the end of the first half, and as you mentioned, nice half for Spencer Sanders. Yeah, he was outstanding throughout the, the time that he played, and you got to give him a lot of credit, but uh, the, the real hero right now is Coach Knowles and the defense and the way they've played together. They, Jim Knowles put together an awesome plan, and these guys have executed. Ed has Coach Gundy. Coach, you told me coming out of the half, you guys had to get that running game going. Chuba's over 100 yards. What do you do to make sure that continues in second well, half? We just got to be better up front. We got to get a, a hat on a hat and let him, he's a good player, let him go make a play. And earlier this week, we talked about how physical this game was through two quarters. Have you guys matched their physicality? Yeah, we, we've done a good job with that. I've, I've been proud of our guys. We still got another half to go, but uh, they, they've been, they've done pretty well up front with the physicality. Thanks, Coach. You got it. Coach Gundy, yeah, thanks very much. It is the half here in Stillwater, Oklahoma State, in K-State 16-3. Coming up after the break, we'll hear from Tylen Wallace's teammates. Welcome back to Stillwater Halftime on Big 12 Down on ESPN Plus between 24th ranked Kansas State and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Dude, take a look at the first half stats for K-State. Only one first down, Ray. Big discrepancy. They're going to get the offense going to have a chance. Yeah, that's, that's what will make this a game, and I agree with what... You know, people are talking about the defense has played pretty well to hold this explosive offense to three field goals, getting down in the red zone. That's good stuff, but your offense has to answer if you're Kansas State. Touchback coming out to 25 a few moments ago. Ash off, caught up with the K-State head coach, Chris Kleiman. Coach, what in the first half did not work for you guys offensively? Just can't get into a rhythm. You know, they've done a nice job of getting us out of a good first and 10 call and getting us backed up against the sticks. And for us to be successful, we have to find a way to run the ball. Our defense is playing their tails off, doing a good job keeping them out of the end zone to force them in some field goals. Well, we've got to find out what kind of resolve we have, but I love our guys, and uh, we've got to have a great second half. What do you have to do defensively to stop Tylen? and stop Chuba. Well, if you hold them to 16 points, that's pretty dang good. I got to be honest with you. So they're going to make some plays. You got to pick your poison a little bit against those guys. Thanks, Coach. Coach Klein, it's points all well taken there. From half number one, let's see how his offense responds to start the second half. And a carry for James Gilbert off right side. He'll pick up three or four on first down before he's brought down by Colby Harbell. -Pete. That's one of the best first down runs we've seen from the Wildcats all night. And it, it is, it's modest. But it keeps them in the the chains. It keeps them ahead of the chains. Now you got a second and six, second and seven call that you can 
do different things with and you're on schedule. Officially a gain of four, second down at six. Motion the tight end. Linners straight ahead. Once again, that pile will push to about the 37. Once again, Harvell Heal. 31 with a tackle. Along with some help. Ogbong Gamiga. Kansas State averaged 5.8 yards to go on their third, on their sixth third downs of the first half. They were 0 for 6. They got it under that average, third and three here. Chance to make a play. They, the run and the pass are both open. It puts that defense in a bind. Let's see what, what happens. Jordan Brown in the backfield as Gilbert went to the sideline for a third three call. Did no Malik Knowles tonight for K State. He didn't make the trip due to injury. Thompson going to roll out, run it right. Looks like he wants to run for it. Dives forward and he's going to be short. Well, he missed a golden opportunity. He had. Landry Weber wide open along the sidelines and instead of throwing it to him for the first down he tried to get it with his legs. So a three and out on their first drive. Look at number 12 wide open right there dump it to him that's a first down instead he tries to run it and comes up short. Devin Actill punt. Line drive punt sends Stoner towards the sideline. He makes the running catch, which carries him out of bounds at the 16. 46 yard punt. First half. First possession of the second half for Oklahoma State's offense. And a handoff and straight ahead. Good there guard. goes Cuba. One man to beat. Can he catch him? No. Hubbard. 84 yards. Touchdown. That put him over 200 for the third time this season. Watch this. He gets this seam, and now it's a foot race. Coach Gundy was telling us that uh, Hubbard, who was from Canada, had opportunities to be on their Olympic sprint team. However, he put 25 pounds on since he's been here, so maybe that ship has sailed, but I'll tell you what, that <laughs> dude can sail himself. 84-yard touchdown run. You mentioned the earlier 200-yard rushing games he's had this year. One was 256 at Tulsa, which is the most rushing yards by anyone in an FBS game this year. And that uh, was before uh, he had 221 at Oregon State on the opening weekend. He's got 198 today. Okay, I jumped Not the gun by two yards. You jumped it by hair, but <laughs> he jumped K-State for 84 yards and took it to the house. 23-3 Cowboys. Welcome back to Stillwater, where Oklahoma State leads number 24, Kansas State, 23-3 after a monster Chuba Hubbard touchdown run. And a little bit about Chuba Hubbard from head coach Mike Gundy. He says he's still not totally a mature football player coming from Canada and playing with a group of players on the field where he was always the star, not getting tackled a lot. He still hasn't hit that maturity level on the field when it comes to playing. Says he still needs about 15 to 20 more games before he really feels like he's that mature football player. Uh, but put on 20 pounds when he got to Oklahoma State, and that made him not join the track team, but it looks like he's got a little track speed in him. Yeah, I'm going to have to differ with Coach Gundy. I think Chuba Hubbard has arrived. <laughs> the return out to the 20-yard line for Phillip Brooks. Well, 9.28 to go third quarter. Thompson hands off. This is Trotter running straight ahead. And I'm not even going to look at the stat sheet. That's got to be their best run from scrimmage on first down tonight. And that's for eight yards. And it's got to be close. Nice little run by Trotter. And he seems to be, if, if there is one, the hottest hand in this backfield. You know, they like to use Harry Trotter, Jordan Brown, and James Gilbert. And nobody really has gotten it going yet today. Just 40 rush yards for the Wildcats. Fakes the handoff to Trotter and Thompson again rolling out is just going to throw it high in the vicinity. The intended receiver and took a little hit there at the end. 
And it's Groundhog's Day for Skylar Thompson because he, he drops back to throw again, and there's nobody to throw it to. Every guy has a defender plastered on him, and then he gets plastered himself. Kansas State has not converted on third down yet tonight. Oh for eight. Kept by the quarterback and a first down run and more for Skyler Tossin, who's ankle tackled at the 44 yard line by Rodarius Williams. Fakes the jet sweep to young blood and then works it to the back side. And finally they find a seam. And this is the kind of thing I expected out of Thompson you know, throughout the night. The flashes of it. And that's really the first time he's cut loose. 20 yard run, the first third down conversion of the game for K-State. Comes with a little over eight minutes to play in the third quarter. They shift the tight ends. Long and Linners to the left side of the formation. They run that way. But Gilbert is going to be tackled for a loss. Back at the 40 by Devin Harper. We spoke with Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, and he said you're going to see more of Devin Harper because he's a good run defender. And he was there, boy. He shot that gap. Nobody touches him. That's a dream shot for a linebacker. It's a loss of four on first down for K-State. Well, back at their own 40 now. With two receivers to each side. Thompson hands off Gilbert coming to the near side, breaks a tackle or two, and he's up near midfield. Mark him down at the 49, thanks to Cameron Murray's tackle. Bring up a third and five. Really haven't got Gilbert going. He's a grad transfer from Ball State, came in over 3,000 career rushing yards. This is a, a, a school that had no running backs on scholarship at one point in the offseason. Yeah. Chris Clements, yeah, nobody had told me about that. But he uh, he was expecting James Gilbert to transfer to North Dakota State. And then when Coach Kleiman got the job, he just followed him here. Weber in motion. Thompson, time running out. He's able to elude one tackler, Mike Scott. It goes to the far side to midfield that Thompson just stayed on his feet. He's still going to be a little short of the first down, but does pick up three yards after all this. Yeah, this is the perfect dodging machine right here, Skyler Thompson. He's got one guy that got him, not, no more. He's got another guy dead on him. Nope, not going to be you or you two. <laughs> and he finally runs into his own man to kind of stop the parade. Yeah, he ran into the back of Weber. And it's fourth and two. And I am surprised that they're not going for yeah. this. Uh, I know there's 603 left here and change in the in the third quarter. A lot of football left. Maybe a fake comes here. I don't know, but this would be one where I would have to go for it. Punt by Ectol and especially after that. And it goes into the end zone. Net 21 yards on the deal. Yep. So 544 to play in this third quarter. But a frustrating night for Skyler Thompson and the Kansas State offense down 20. His team lost last weekend in Austin to start 0 1 at conference for the fourth straight year. Trying to get in the win column. Conference game number two. This is the conference opener for K State. He is six there on first half. Chuba. Who, by the way, now is officially over 200 yards. 12 Thank carries you. for 206 yards. His third 200-yard game of the year. Rolling out. Now Sanders is going to sprint past one. He's to midfield down the sideline. Gets hit hard at the 37-yard line by Denzel Goolsby. A long run for the quarterback, Spencer Sanders. It shows you his ability to make a play out in space, too. I mean, He's a, a nice runner, but a better scrambler. And by that, I mean he's got the eyes and the vision to see where to scramble. 
And then he, when he gets there, he puts the, the hammer down, and it's tough getting him to the dirt. 29-yard run for the quarterback, Spencer Sanders. Weaving through traffic. Down to the 28, a run of seven. Ed has more. Dylan Stoner told me that, yeah, he likes it when uh, Sanders throws the ball. He really likes that, but he loves watching him use his feet. He told me, we know the play is never over with him at quarterback, so we always have to stay ready. And then they love watching him when he scrambles outside of the pocket. And he has been an outstanding runner. And another run there, Daquan Patton stopping Hubbard. You know, Sanders came in number two in rushing yard for quarterbacks at FBS. Only Jalen Hurts had run for more coming into this weekend. And you can see why the explosiveness that he has and just the sampling that we've seen tonight. But I'm even more impressed with the way he's run this offense. I haven't seen a lot of mistakes or any confusion. And then throwing the ball, he's 16 to 22 for a buck 53 and, and one touchdown. Sanders going to let it fly, and it completed the five for Tylen Wallace, who had to leap right along the sideline to try to come down with that. Yeah, that's the kind of catch Wallace can make, too. I mean, this look at his body control and the way he goes straight up. He knows where the sideline is. Just lost a little concentration there, but that's an athletic dude. I think if you ask him, he's going to think he should have caught that ball. Oh, he, he mad, he's mad at himself right now. I'll tell you that. Wallace has eight catches for 145 yards, though, tonight. Sanders. There he goes. <laughs> he been around, giving ground, throwing. He made a mistake there. It's picked off. The flag comes out at the end of the play after the interception for Elijah Sullivan. Yeah, there, there's an old saying. You don't throw across your body late in the down. On field, number 72, offense. That penalty has declined. First down. And that's a, a freshman quarterback that we, we've talked about. And this, you don't do this. Now, yeah, you got a guy standing there open, but people are coming. And then the throw was a little errant as well. So he'll learn from that one. Probably won't see that again anytime soon. First pick of the year for the junior, Elijah Sullivan. It's Fletch. Hammer. Four times Sanders has been picked. Let's see if maybe that we keep trying to find something for K-State to build off of. They do too. They haven't found it on offense yet. We're going to give to Gilbert. Bounces off one tackler and a nice run lowers the shoulder and a first down. That is something you can build off. Gilbert ran over somebody and now, okay, it's physical. It's on. This is how we play and yet we haven't seen much. But watch you get up in the hole and just bam, just smash through the linebacker Rodriguez. 15-yard run on first down for James Gilbert. Under two minutes to go, third quarter. Oklahoma State down 20. They fake the jet sweep. Thompson threads that pass, and they say that is complete to Dalton Schoen, first down. I thought that throw was a little bit late but nonetheless right on the money and then shown with a guy draped entirely all over him is able to make the catch with the hands that's beautiful football 13 yard gain first catch of the night for shown is eighth of the year first down k state at the 38 of oklahoma state straight ahead goes gilbert well the running game Starting to show some signs of life here for the Wildcats right Yeah, and they're starting to do more what I call pin pull type blocking where they block down and then pull people around rather than the zone stuff. And that can, that was their bread and butter coming into this. And I know you want to show teams different looks, but you also have to be who you are. And I, I think they, they failed to do that so far here tonight. Final seconds of this third quarter. Get to play off in time. Thompson, good throw. And out of reach of the intended receiver. Joaquin Gill, and that takes us to the end of the third quarter. Well, the only scoring in that third quarter was a long Hubbard touchdown run. Yeah, boy, was it. He just took off 84 yards, turned into a foot race at the end. And I'm telling you here, 
convince the foot race. My money's on Hubbard. In the fourth quarter from Stillwater, 23-3, Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy's team trying to even their record at 101 in conference. And this is the conference opener for Chris Kleiman in Kansas State for the off week yesterday. Chris Kleiman has not lost as a head coach since November 4th, 2017. I just did the math, 694 days. I believe the number. I'm not sure if I believe that you actually did math. I had my shoes off. That should have been your first clue. From the Wildcat, Holcomb dropped the snap, but then picks it up and runs it forward to about the 30. Does gain three or four yards. Holcomb tried to run before he got the snap. I mean, he's, he's jacked up. He wants to make an impact. He's getting a chance here. Critical time for this team. They didn't have to use a timeout, their last one. With Holcomb in as the Wildcat, because it was the first play of the quarter. Now fourth and two, and no question they're going for it here. Have to. Leave Holcomb in there. Thompson is at the top of the screen. A motion, young blood, handed to him on the jet sweep. First down, down sideline, hit out of bounds inside the 20 yard line by Trey Sterling. And Kansas State converts on fourth down. And give Holcomb a lot of credit because I guarantee you he wanted to keep this football, but he stayed true to his read. He reads them linebackers, and if they're coming at him, he's going to hand it off. If they're getting wide, he'll, he'll keep it and take it up the middle. Good read by Holcomb. It extends the drive for Kansas State. First down at the 19 of the Pokes. Making the handoff to Trotter. In trouble, just lets it go and in the direction against center receiver Gill. That pocket had collapsed. And That's uh, the, the, the play action pass. This is the one they hit for their final touchdown to beat Mississippi State. Long look right there, holding the ball out, and then the receiver coming across. There was nowhere to go. He was covered like a glove and really. Thompson had no chance, just kind of threw it in the general direction of a receiver near the sideline. Give us to Gilbert, trying to stretch it out. And can he's tackled for a loss by Trey Sterling. Sterling's been all over the field tonight, man. He's been making plays just like that. He plays close to the line of scrimmage as a safety, but we've seen him break up some passes. And when he turns the Jets on, comes downhill, his look out because he's going to get there quick. And then he's going to finish it when he does. Played a really good ball game tonight. It's a fifth tackle of the night. By the way, for Sterling. Here comes pressure on Thompson. He lets it go across the middle and finds his receiver, Brooks. Mark Brooks. At the 19, but bring out. As you see Thompson get hit as he threw there. Yeah, always a, a price to, play, to pay. Some good sportsmanship helping him up. I never did that back in the day. Yeah. You get yourself up. Wasn't what your generation did much of, right? No. Well, they're on their own in that regard. Lynch is hit from 46. And he hits this one as well from 37. 23 6. Welcome back to Big 12 now on ESPN. Plus. Still a three-score game, 17-point lead for Oklahoma State, 12-16 in the fourth quarter from Stillwater. Watch Kyler Thompson after he gets the hit on this play. And he's going to get up a little gingerly. He's holding that right knee, and we do not know the extent of that injury at this point, but we will find out soon enough. He is on the bench. Doesn't look like any medical personnel attending to him at this moment. Landon Wolf and L.D. Brown back deep to receive this kickoff for Oklahoma State. 
And a touchback. Hubbard looking patiently. He's able to get a couple yards out of it before he runs into Brunson Massey. And those guys have to be in tremendous shape. And those big fellas and this tempo that they run and the heat out here, it just amazes me that they're able to continue to go, go, go like they do. We'll look to the sideline to eat a little bit of clock. Blake Clark's down to 15. That's that's low for Oklahoma State's offense. Sanders time to throw and has his man open but overshot Stoner and it's picked off by Daryl Patterson. Patterson returns it to 45 to midfield and hit there hit hard. Yeah, Tyler Tyler Wallace. Wallace. Like, I, I can play defense too. What do you need? But just an overthrow really from Spencer Sanders. It looked like the intended receiver got caught up with the defensive back Patterson and Patterson got kind of pushed back and it put him right into the path of the football. Second time tonight that Sanders has been picked and definitely tell that Patterson feeling the effects that hit at the end of the play. There and a great concentration to tap that thing around and keep control of it. Then you pay at the end as Mr. Wallace makes a call. Boom. Hello. Well, Kansas State down 17. After the second turnover of the night, and they find the tight end and up in it is Nick Lenners. His first catch of the night, third of the season, a gain of 19. It was the first time all night Malcolm Rodriguez didn't have the perfect coverage all over a tight end. And They've been trying to do this all night, but they haven't been able to because Rodriguez has been draped over the guy. This time, Lenners was able to get a little separation. First down from the 30. Give to Trotter. Turns the field inside the 20, down to 15, close to the 15. He was met by Harvell Peel and Brock Martin. One thing I've seen less rotation of this Cowboy defense tonight than, I, than I've seen previously, and I think fatigue might be become a factor, might st be starting to become a factor in relation to Kansas State's ability to move the football here. Thompson finds a screen. Brooks. First to goal inside the five. Nice play call there. Tunnel screen. And the Cowboy defense has been voiding middle to cover guys on the outside. And you dump it inside and you get a few linemen up in there and you just come back to it. You see the two linemen out front. There's only one man there in the middle. And that's Akbang Bamiga and he was a lonester there. First and goal of K-State trying to find the end zone for the first time tonight. And we had a couple of Field goals from Lynch from 37 to 46, but haven't found the end zone yet. Make this a little more interesting if they punch one in here. It's Gilbert. Touchdown, Kansas State with 7.14 to go. Fourth touchdown run of the year for James Gilbert. Not much resistance on that drive and that particular play. Really good job blocking there by Tyler Mitchell, the right guard. He just, he got his rear end in the hole, blocked that guy from getting across his face, and boom, a little seam, and that's all Gilbert needs. Mike Lynch, a perfect 18 for 18 point after on the season, make it 19 for 19, and it's 23-13. 10 point game. They found the end zone, Ray. They did. It's there. We were wondering. Well, Gilbert's touchdown run, his fourth of the season, but that's the 11th rushing touchdown for a Kansas State running back this season. I mention that because last year, Ray, only had 13 rushing touchdowns all year by a running back. Yeah, and that added up to a five and seven season, but they yeah, are running the ball better here tonight. Look at their first 11 drives, but their last three, as you alluded to, starting to find some more rhythm offensively. Yeah, and, and I, I, I got to say some of it's the fatigue factor for the Cowboy defense.
but I also think that, that they finally found a, a little bit of formula and they quit shooting themselves in the foot. They, they, they were their own worst enemy up until those last three drives, basically stopping themselves as much as anything. Is it too little too late for K-State? Well, we don't know but for them to keep this rally going. They're going to defensively need to make a quick stop. That fair catch made at the one, but it'll come out to 25 for that rule that was changed a year or two ago. The play clock's down to two. Are they going to get this off in time? Very close, but they do. And we'll pick up about four on first down. Wayne Dones, number four, with the tackle for K-State. Yeah, clock's running now. Let's see if they, they try to take a little more time off of it, or they just go in their, their normal rotation, their normal speed. There's your answer. Yeah, they snap it with 29 on the play clock with the game clock running. Hubbard is going to leave about a third and a long two or three make that. I'm talking to Sean Gleese, and he said, no, we, we try to get it off 425, but when we're humming, when we're going, there's 30 or more seconds left on that play clock when they get their snap off. Call it third and three. Big play for the K-State defense right here if they're going to try to continue this rally. Handoff, Hubbard, first down. Boy, he's kind of he's a glider, man. Yes, interesting. He's, and his vision, and I know Coach Gundy's talked about this was as well, has, has really improved. Uh, initially, he was a, just a fast guy. Now he's turned into a real running back, and you can just see the difference. So Hubbard able to move the chains with that last run, and that lets the clock run down here. Down to six minutes. Ed has more. The best players on the field, if not the best player tonight. But Mike Gundy told us, hey, he's still a year and a half away from being a real NFL prospect. But I'm sure a lot of teams are going to look at him this season. And there he goes. See? Yeah. They're going to like a lot of film that they see from him. That year and a half seems a long way away. Yeah, I think Coach Gundy <laughs> just wants to keep him around for a year and a half. I think that's what that was all about because – in my mind, Hubbard's ready right now. I mean, look, look at the explosiveness, the vision, the balance that he has. It, it, he's just a, the complete package, and he's getting close to In fact, he has surpassed his career high, I believe. That's a 44-yard run, so he has 285 yards, and your math is correct once again. And the first-year offensive coordinator, Sean Gleason, got to be happy with what he's seen from his running back. Yes, he's an analytics guy, and... You know, he has a little bit of a baseball background, and those, those numbers, apparently, there's some truth in them. Numbers don't lie. Brown. So we'll have to look and see what others have done around the nation today. With this 285 yards, a new career high for Hubbard. He's also the highest is total the, in FBS, correct, this year. For, for this season. And he's, if... Nobody went over 265. He's got the top two. 70 yards after contact for Hubbard, who gets a little chance to add to that as he lowered the shoulder on Wayne Jones. You know, the, Hubbard's mix of power into his game now, he too. Is. And, I mean, this is a perfect example of it. This is a powerful man. He's just going to lower the shoulder and say, back down, because I'm coming. First and goal for Oklahoma State as we're under four minutes to go. Be bad to give it to Hubbard again either. They uh, choose the latter of your choices. Just a couple of yards at a time for Chuba. Once again, Marcus Key's there to give him the hand to get him up. That guy it just works, works, works. He plays with, with exuberance. He is, to me, the, the key to this offense other than the big three. Tube is coming off, and that's the reason you're hearing this crowd reacting the way they are. If that's the last we've seen of him, 24 carries, 280 yards. 289 yards, pardon me. I want to short a minute. This is L.D. Brown. A nice run for L.D., who's spun down inside the 10 by Jonathan Alexander. Burnham. 
Cowboys have just imposed their will on this drive. And there's kind of an example of it. People are getting blocked. There's a hat on a hat. Nobody touches Brown until he's basically at linebacker depth. That means your offensive line is moving people. With the power of Chuba, who's almost in the end zone again, Stop just short. His, the legs don't quit, and they, they pump pretty fast. And, and he just that that generates his power because he's not that big. I mean, he's 207 is what they list him at. Coach said 210, but he carries a lot more than that when he's hitting people. So here's the issue: it's fourth down, and I think the crowd wants the ball right back in the belly of Chuba here, who's on the cusp of 300 yeah. yards, but they're only at the one yard line. It would be hard not to hand it to number 30 right now. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say he's going to get this one. Chuba, by the way, does have 303 total yards when you include a couple of catches for seven yards. But this is a good decision by Coach Gundy. Why not? Get some points here. And if they're going to beat you, they got to have a, a, a real miracle to score 14 in the last 103. So Amendola, that's a new career high for him. Four field goals in a game. So he hits from 18 there, but also 21, 28, 25 prior to that. And he's a perfect 10 of 10 in field goal attempts on the season for the fifth year senior. Well, Kansas State will be hosting Baylor. Baylor is undefeated. Had a nice win today over Iowa State. We're going to see them ranked. Next week, they should be. They could take the place of Kansas State at 24. Oklahoma State might be up there themselves. It's Brooks stopped at the 25. 58 seconds to play. Thompson lets it go far side. And the tackle on Jordan Brown will keep him in bounds at the 19. The clock rolls. Kevin Henry getting in the action as a linebacker makes that play. The depth of this defense has been manifested tonight as well. Fire across the middle, a little behind the intended receiver, Brooks. Incomplete. Well, Skyler Thompson had good memories the last couple of games against Oklahoma State. He won here two years ago. Went 10 for 13. Career high three touchdown passes, 204 yards, 45 40 win over OSU, which was ranked 10th in the nation at that time. And then last year, 31 to 12 win at home on homecoming in Manhattan. Well, this one will go in the bad memory bank here. This 11 of 23 for 118 yards passing tonight for Skylar Thompson. Around about a yard, yard and a half short of the first down. We were down to the last 20 seconds here in Stillwater. K-State will fall for the first time under head coach Chris Lyman. They'll be 3-1, and 0-1 oh in conference. Yeah, Oklahoma I, State 4 and 1, 1 and 1 in conference. Yeah, say, Mark, that's it. They're not going to run another play. And that makes sense to me. You never really got a feel the entire game that Kansas State was truly in it, didn't we? No, not at all. I mean, there was one sign of light the first drive after the, the rain delay. But other than that, this was a thorough beatdown. Oklahoma State did it tonight. And no it question. may not look that way, just a 13-point difference, but you're exactly right, Ray. I mean, it, it, it's Oklahoma State, the way they played, you probably think they would have scored more than 26 points. You would, and, and give the Wildcat defense some credit. They, they did bow up in the red zone, but I'll tell you what, they got hit in the mouth all day. Coach Gundy down below with Ed. Coach, coming into this week, tough loss to Texas. We talked about how physical this game is going to be, but what did you learn about your guys beating a tough Kansas State team? Well, I'm really proud of our team, but uh, our defense was tremendous. Uh, they uh, they knew this was going to be a physical game, and um, they got right in the middle of it, and I was very proud of them. And then in the end, we were able to rush the football offensively and secure the game. 
Um, Kansas State's a good, good football team and well coached, but our guys did a great job of coaching. Our kids played really hard. Chuba Hubbard, career high 296 rushing yards, first player in school history with three 200 yard games in the first five games of the season. I mean, how special is he? Yeah, he's really running good. Our guys up front are uh, getting their head on the right guys, but his speed allows him to, to be a difference maker. When he gets the open field, he can really roll. So it's always a team effort, but very, very proud of Chuba, but I can't say enough about the defense. And I'd be remiss to say, I mean, your offensive line with all those shuffling you guys had to do, I mean, how good are they doing? I'm very proud of them. We had one mistake at the end, 77, uh, got a hold of call, um, but we had two new tackles, you know, and I'm proud of the way they, they played tonight. We had some mistakes, got to try to limit turnovers, but uh, overall it was a great win. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. 26-13 Oklahoma State beats 24th ranked Kansas State tonight here in Stillwater. This has been a presentation of ESPN for Ray Bentley, Ed Ashoff, and our entire crew. I'm Mark Thanks for sharing this one with us. Good night from Stillwater.